everybody, I'm so excited you're here for the second day of the Property Investment Mastery, Seven Days to Success Summit. Exciting that you came back for more and tonight's is one of my favorite. I am a property management expert. I teach it at universities. I teach it to all the students that I mentor. So this is where I get really excited. I've managed over 500 million pounds worth of properties. Seriously, believe it. So I've put some really, really great strategies in place to make sure that you're doing this really efficiently. So this seminar is all about managing your property portfolio in 15 minutes a day. And you might be thinking, oh, here we go with another seminar, which doesn't get me started with expanding my property portfolio. Well, let me tell you, if you are not getting your property management in line and you're not getting your property portfolio in order and managing it efficiently, you're never going to have time to expand your property portfolio. You're going to get burnt out. You're going to be thinking, actually, why am I in this? Running a property portfolio is like having a second job. And I don't want you to be feeling this. I want you to get it organized. I want you to get it straightened out. And I want you to really, really, really just actually think that property management is a fun thing. And look, if you can take this in-house, take property management in-house and do it really, really well, you're saving yourself up to 20% a month of your rent. And let me let you into a little secret. My own property portfolio, I manage it from anywhere in the world. That's right, I can travel, I can do what I want to do and still manage my property portfolio really, really well. So don't think that by taking on your property portfolio that actually you're pigeonholing yourself into living where you live now so you're really close to your property portfolio. It's definitely not like that. So we've got a lot to get through in the next 15 minutes. So let's jump straight in. So the aim of this seminar is to look at your current portfolio and streamline your property management. This is important because once you've got this down to a fine art, you will have time to go out and expand your portfolio. Yes, this is useful whether you outsource your property management or not, because you need to have an understanding of exactly what it takes to manage your property portfolio. It's simple. To be an expert in property investment, you need to know about everything to do with it. You really do. So make sure that you also conquer this and understand exactly what's going on. So the very first thing you're going to need to do is get organized. You need to know your property inside out. And if you have a leasehold, you need to have the key points within the lease. Let me tell you exactly what you're going to need to know. So you're going to need to know things like how big the property is, where the meters are for the property, where the water stock valve is, or where the gas cutoff point is. You need to know the ins and outs of your property. You really do. You need to know who your utility suppliers are, who your council tax provider is, how much council tax you pay, how much roughly it would cost your tenants to live in a property. And if you're a leaseholder, for any of you who've got leases over your properties, then you're going to need to know what responsibility you have within the property and what responsibility the freeholder or the head leaseholder have. So you're going to need to dig out all of these documents and you're going to need to go round the property and really have an in-depth look at what's going on. And here's what my biggest tip is. Get a floor plan for the property. And if you don't know where to get a floor plan from, places like UPAD do that. Actually, UPAD are really, really good and they're quick at coming out for things like that. Um, I'm not affiliated with them, but I do use them a lot because I do a lot of my lettings and property management all on my own. But they actually have these services and you know you're going to get a good service and people are going to come out. So use a floor plan and go around and mark the meter location on it. Mark where the boilers are. Mark where you've put smoke detectors and CO2 alarms. So you've got all of this. You need to know this information because if you're managing your property and you need to get a contractor out, you can actually say, well, go out and have a look at this because it's located here. Or you can even give them a floor plan, which is marked up already. In the workbook, we are going to go through exactly what you need to know within the property. And I've given you a really great checklist of everything you need to go through so you've got space to write the answers. Make sure you do this, it's an invaluable tool. And even if you don't 
manage property yourself, you outsource it, well great, you can give this to your managing agent so they know exactly what's going on too. Some of you may say, well, they should know this. Unfortunately, some managing agents are pretty lazy, so make sure that they do have this information because actually the one thing you don't want to happen is you don't want contractors not being able to complete works because they don't know where something is. So make sure that you get organised, you know your property inside out, and then once you've got this information, no mistakes are made later on. You then need to deal with communication with your tenant. Set clear boundaries from the outset. When are you really contactable? The reason for this is because tenants can think that you're always there for, for them and it can be hard for you to say no. But actually, you've got a life to live too and as much as you really, really, really want to keep in contact with your tenant and make sure they're getting your, the best from your property, you can't be at their beck and call 24 seven. There's got to be a distinguishment between actually, yes, just get in contact with me and ask for something and oh my gosh, there is an emergency. And these are the sort of boundaries you need to be setting from the outset. When are you contactable just for the general, hey, this is a problem, can you sort it out? I mean, it needs to be at least once a day, but it doesn't need to be 24 hours in that day. And then how would your tenant get in contact with you and be like, oh my gosh, there's an emergency, please pick up, please pick up, please pick up. So let the tenants know how exactly you're going to deal with that. But again, you only need, you can say to them, actually, I'm going to be on my emails every morning between 9 and 9.30 or 9 and 9.15 even. Manage your property portfolio in 15 minutes a day. You can just say that's the time that you're going to be sat at your desk and that's the time you'll come back to any emails or any texts or you know, you're looking through your mailbox or your answer phone messages, they will then learn to respect those boundaries. But then you also need to give them the option that actually if the whole property is falling down and oh my gosh, there's an absolute disaster, how would they get in contact with you and how would they differentiate between, between the fact that an emergency is happening and they need help? I find that a really easy way of dealing with this is an out of hours call service, something where you can transfer your calls through to after five o'clock at night and before 9am in the morning. And actually this can be really, really cheap. It can work out as something like five pounds per property per quarter. It may be a little bit more than that depending on the size of property or maybe even a little bit less if you've just got a one bedroom flat. But this is a really ha good way of making sure that someone's still at the end of the phone but you're not being woken up overnight or at weekends or public holidays and you can even pay for an additional service if you're on holiday for a certain amount of time. Again, what happens in emergencies? You need to cover this with your tenant and also make sure that they've got details of what to do in the event of emergency. Make sure that they've got all of this and all of a sudden your property management will become that much easier but you do have to do it from the outset as soon as you determine that relationship with your tenant make sure that they have this info and again we're going to go through this in the workbook lettings another vital part of your property management you need to know your best case rental income and your worst case rental income and you need to do this through going through portals such as Rightmove and Zoopla you are in control of your lettings, even if you've got a letting agent doing it for you. So having this information means that you are prepared for actually what you could get from the market and what you may not get from the market. So you need to be prepared. You also need to know exactly what you want. What rent would you ideally get? And then you can compare that between where the market is right now and actually what is realistic for you. You also need to have a marketing strategy. You need to be putting the property on the market somewhere between four to eight weeks before you actually need tenants to move in. All of this you've got to take into account so that you ensure you have a smooth transition between one tenant to the next. You need to have this strategy and confer it with your letting agents. You are in control here, you really are. And again, in the workbook, I'm going to be looking through with you exactly what you need to know. But again, the tip is, every research that you do, you simply need Rightmove or Zoopla. And I find that they're actually the best sites 
for looking at property data, mainly because they're the largest and they've been around the longest. So they've got that huge information set that actually will be really, really useful for you. Also, final tip for lettings is make sure you make your property look at the best it can be. So if that is as simple as going through and putting a few soft furnishings in and making sure that it looks like it could be living livable, or you turn the heating on slightly when you go out to do viewings, or you make sure that there's lights and all the lights are working, this works really, really great for making sure that tenants actually think, oh, this is a nice place to live. And you might be thinking right now, Natasha, why are you telling us about this? We know that lettings are a huge part of managing my property portfolio. And actually, that's, this is where having tenants makes you money. You need to be fully in control so that you know how much money you're going to be bringing in from each property. You can really control the process so that you don't have extra long void periods. And you're constantly on top of your letting agents, making sure that they are working for you. The more organized you are in doing this, the better the success rate of getting in tenants early so that you don't lose money. And this is what it is all about. So when we go through this in the workbook, it's going to be really, really useful for you so that you can actually see how to control your letting agents and make sure that you budget and know exactly what's going on. Next step is accounting. Accounting is obviously important. So if you're not doing accounting, how do you know if you're making money? So the first tip of advice for great property management is to diarise to do your monthly accounting 24 hours after the rent falls due. You don't want to be doing it a couple of weeks in advance because a couple of weeks of ignoring your tenants or not really knowing what's going on in your property can cost you a lot of money. You need to be jumping on that immediately. You also need to have a strategy for how to deal with non-payment of rent. And this is why you're doing your accounting 24 hours after the rent falls due. Because you can simply text your tenant and go, oh, I've seen that you've missed your rent. What's going on? If they don't come back to you, day two, email them. I'm slightly concerned. I've not heard from you. Is everything okay? Are you paying your rent? Day three, same again. Day four, you can phone them. Day five, you can email again. Day six, why not email, phone and text? Day seven, give it to your solicitors and show them exactly how you've chased for the rent. Chances are though, if you've got a good landlord and tenant relationship, the tenant's actually gonna come back to you and go, oops, this is the problem and you guys can chat about it and sort out the best possible solution for the pair of you. Remember to keep a level head. This is a business and you want to make sure that you're getting the best for you. Going off the walls and screaming and shouting about it doesn't work for anybody. It's important here that you make sure that you're just thinking about the best possible outcome. So if that means that you're going to have to take payments in drips and drabs, but you've got that payment strategy lined out, well, surely that's better than nothing. Remember how long it takes to get tenants out of your property. And unfortunately, if they're paying rent, even in the littlest bit, chances are the court are going to look favorably on them. So if they do offer to pay something, why not just accept it? Why not start accepting it, allowing them to pay back their arrears, and if necessary, take money from the deposit. You want to try and help your tenants out here. So getting on your accounting and acting quickly is the best way forward. And if you don't get anything after seven days, well, then your solicitor can advise you what to do next. Remember to also deduct all your expenses of your property, including travel and any management expenses that you incur. You can get creative about this because obviously this is how you minimize your tax. So again, any petrol that you're using, anything that you use to manage your property, so phone bills and all of that kind of thing, make sure you're deducting this from your rental expenses and getting clever with it because this, again, I reiterate, is how you're going to be reducing your rental income or your rental profit so that you don't get taxed as highly. Maintenance. This is the final thing that you need to keep completely on top of. Keep an eye on your maintenance. Log all maintenance you undertake to make sure you know what's going on. You don't want to be getting double charged for things simply because you can't remember what you instructed last time. You don't want to be paying over the odds for poor maintenance that keeps happening again. You never know, you might keep going out and repairing a leak or patching up a job 
actually you need to have an eye on this and you need to look closely so that you can see exactly what's going on and think hmm there could be a larger problem here so why don't we investigate and get it done properly it can save you thousands of pounds in the long run and it doesn't take long to do it's as simple as making an excel spreadsheet and really recording everything that's going on how much you're paying to do maintenance jobs who you're giving the job to so which contractor and the outcome how long does it take to fix from when you when you the problem was reported to when it was solved all of these things are really simple it doesn't take long to do at all maybe a couple of minutes after you've got off the phone or you've read an email from your tenant but do make sure you're doing this it's a great way of cutting costs it's a great way of making sure that you're picking up on any bigger problems and it's a way of seeing if actually you keep doing maintenance and it's really helping your property and making sure that it's still maintaining its value that's important isn't it that's why we do maintenance to make sure that we still keep the property's value because if you don't look after it that well it's going to lose value and then what happens if you want to remortgage and take some money out well actually you're probably going to have to do works first so think about this and be tactical which leads me on to my next point schedule routine maintenance prevention is always better than having to react to something after it's happened so you might need gutter cleaning you might need fire safety of course you're going to need gas safety of course you're going to need electrical safety but make sure you're diarising it it's really really important because this is where things go wrong if you get lax with it you need to just keep up with it so that your tenants are always living in safe comfortable accommodation and you're keeping your property in the best possible condition. So all of this we're gonna go through in the workbook and I am going to get you working through it and making sure that you're keeping an eye on everything you need to for property management and that you can do it all really efficiently and you can streamline it. Property management isn't difficult. All you've got to do is keep up with what's going on health and safety wise and legislation which you can get through subscribing to services such as mine or other people's because we update that all the time. Again, I'm a property management expert. It's my job to know this stuff, which is why I give it to all of my clients so that they can continue using this time and time again. Yes, this has been a quick seminar, but actually I think it's really important that you get your property management under control so that you're not losing money through outsourcing your property management to a firm that's charging you a lot of money but not having a hands-on approach with it instead this gives you the opportunity to take full control and also the confidence to know exactly what you're doing so i hope this has been useful for you and what will be even more useful now is going to the workbook and working through the tasks there's a lot of tasks there, but the reason for this is so that you are completely 100% organised to manage your own portfolio. And trust me, once you've done that, you can manage it in 15 minutes a day. It doesn't take that long. All you've got to do is be efficient and have a streamlined way of doing things. And it is as simple as that. So I hope this has been really useful for you. And do take the time you need to go over and jump into the workbook. If you want to ask me any questions, then do reply to this email, natasha at ncrealestate.co.uk, and I am here to answer your queries. Until then, I can't wait for you to join me tomorrow for researching your next property. Enjoy these tasks. I hope you find them really useful, and I cannot wait to see you again soon.